Welcome to A Day of Prayer. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Together, let's engage in relationship with Christ through prayer, faith, and His Word. Good morning and welcome. You're listening to A Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. We're so glad to have you. But before we get into the word, let's pray. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for being who you are, Lord, thank every you, day, Lord, that you do not change no matter what, Lord, that you are a rock that we can depend on, Lord, our refuge and our strong fortress. Lord, we also just thank you for your Holy Spirit that he continues to guide us and lead us in every situation, Lord, and that there is not one situation where you do not know the answer, Lord, but that you know every answer and the right thing to do in every situation, Lord. And Lord, we also mm-hmm. just thank you for putting that on the inside of us through your Holy Spirit who dwells in us, Lord, mm-hmm. giving us that same ability. And Lord, we just thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. amen. Well, good Hallelujah. morning. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> we are glad to have you with us, and we're excited to get back in the Word again. And amen. still. Amen. Uh, I mean, this is a, a daily thing for us throughout the day. Uh, we just we enjoy spending time in the word and mm-hmm. yes we handle it seriously because it is serious it's the word of god but we can also have fun right when we enjoy things mm-hmm. we tend to have fun doing them right amen and that includes yeah. studying the word so welcome amen. we're glad to have you with us as we study the word together Hallelujah. and we're continuing discussing the lord's house and the garments for the priesthood we've been talking about the robe of the ephod and the turban and well we're going to continue that again today in this episode so can i get a volunteer to reread in exodus 28 verses 31 through 43 please i will all right i promise you shall make the robe of rope of the ephod all of blue there shall be an opening for his head in the middle of it it shall have a woven binding all around its opening, like the opening in a coat of mail, so that it does not tear. And upon its hem you shall make pomegranates of blue, purple, and scarlet all around its hem, and bells of gold between them all around. A golden bell and a pomegranate, a golden bow and a pomegranate, upon the hem of the ro- robe all around. And it shall be upon Aaron when he ministers, and its sound shall be heard when he goes into the holy place before the Lord, and when he comes out, that he may not die. You shall, t- you shall also make a plate of pure gold and engrave on it, like the engraving of, the s- of insignia, holiness to the Lord. And you shall put it on a blue cord that may be on the turban. It shall be on the front of the turban. So it shall be on Aaron's head, that Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy things which the children of Israel hallowed in their holy gifts. It sh- and it shall always be on his forehead, that they may be accepted before the Lord. You shall skillfully weave the, the tunic of fine linen thread. You shall make the turban of fine linen, and you shall make, it, make the sash of woven work. For Aaron's sons you shall make tunics, and you shall make sashes for them, and you shall make hats for them, for glory and beauty. Amen. So you shall put them on Aaron, your brother, and his sons with them. You shall anoint them, consecrate them, and sanctify them, that they may minister to me as priests. And you shall make for them linen trousers to cover their nakedness. They shall reach from the waist to the thighs. They shall be on Aaron and on his sons when they come into the tab into the tabernacle of meeting, or when they come near the altar to minister in the holy place, that they do not incur iniquity and die. It shall be statute forever to him and his descendants after him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Well, at this time, we're going to open up the floor to give each of you the opportunity to share what the Holy Spirit is speaking and ministering to you. And if you have any questions... So please ask them. So who would like to begin? I would. All right, Layla. Okay, so there is like the last half of mm, verse 41. You shall anoint them, consecrate them, and sanctify them that they may minister to me as priests. And then looking at uh, 
a little bit of the last half of the last verse, um, that they do not incur iniquity and die. So the Lord was showing me something interesting. He said, um, each of us has an anointing from the Lord Mm -hmm. to carry out a specific role and a specific purpose on the earth. Now, it's not exactly like Mr. Benny Hinn, you wave your hand and they're healed, or it's not exactly like Mr. Smith Wigglesworth and you just punch the evil spirit out of them. (laughs) But it's... (laughs) God has given us and created a unique place for each and every one of us. And the way that he brought it to my attention was like thinking of fingerprints or snowflakes. There are no two that are alike. Out of mm-hmm. And with fingerprints, they're like classified and classified in like three different categories. But in that, the Lord had made it so intricately and with such detail that none of them are alike. And so we each have our own unique identity in Christ. And... In him, that's when we have our anointing, and he's anointed each and every one of us for a specific role and a specific purpose to carry out on the earth. Mm -hmm. And when he did that, he consecrated us. He he set us apart. He separated us from the wolves, or actually it would be like sheep and goats. He separated the sheep from the goats and said, you're my people. Here's the boundary. Here's the line. Then he sanctified us, which he cleansed us and took away our impurity so that we could Mm -hmm. stand before him. Um, and minister to him as priests, as his children. Mm-hmm. And in the last half where it said that the garments that Aaron and his sons wore was, were put on so that they didn't incur iniquity and die. So us putting on Jesus' blood for the remission of our sins and putting on his spirit, the Holy Spirit, and operating in that and working in it is a covering for us so that we don't incur iniquity and die and perish. Because, mm-hmm. well, Jesus, Jesus said, I wish that none should perish, Amen. but that all would have eternal life and life abundantly. And because of his love and because he didn't want us to perish, he put these um, guidelines into place. And while it's a garment in the time of the children of Israel with the ark and the tabernacle, here for us, that is our operating in the Holy Spirit. And obeying the words that he speaks to us it could be very easy and i'm bringing myself up as an example as well to go and i'll say it this way for the enemy to make it sound like the lord is saying something so to get you in a place where you're operating you desire to do something so like with Charles, I wanted to do like the mr vinnie hen and like wave my hand and people fall down healed and it would be very easy easily for the adversary to take that and cause me to stumble and fall and bring others with me if I did not allow that desire to be submitted to the Lord. If I didn't go, okay, Lord, you've got a place for me. There's only one Mr. Benny Hen. The Lord needed one, but he also needs a me. He needs a Layla Ann to do what she's supposed to do. And if I'm too busy comparing myself to others or trying to be them instead of being who God created me to be. Now I'm out of alignment and now I've created a, um, uh, like a hole in, in the, in the armor, if you will, because now I'm not where I'm supposed to be. If Aaron had decided, or these weavers had decided to go, Lord, I don't want to make the, the garment blue. I think it'll look better if it's white. Well, n- now there's an issue because the Lord had said, make the ephod all of blue. Well, Lord, I w- Oh, we can make the body of blue, but I'd like the sleeves to be white. There's an issue with that as well. So as we look and consider and we see events going on in the world, remember that we have a covenant with the Lord and he has a place for each and every one of us. Our place is not somebody else's place. <laughs> as you tell me often, Mommy. Amen. Um, the scripture says um, when Jesus was talking, he said he was going to go to prepare a place for us. And in his father's house, there are many mansions. And if it was not so, he would have told us. So a mansion is a dwelling place, right? Yes. So there's a place for each of us. As we consider this, remember who our dwelling place is, is Jesus Christ. So when you look at someone else's gift, when you look at how the Lord ministers to them, understand this is how the Lord wants to minister through them. It's not their personal ability. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's often how that, um, that lust gets in there and then it gets twisted and it's now my power. I'm doing this. And that's not, that's not the case at all. You've waved your hands many times. (laughs) 
right? I'm sure Mr. Yes. Benny Hinn waves his hand and says hello to people. And he's just waving his hand. That's the Holy Spirit. That's his power and ability being, being used. Benny Hinn is a vessel. He's That's not the, oper- the generator of the power. Okay? So keep yes. that in mind. Um, same with Catherine Coleman. Same with, as you brought up, Wigglesworth. Right? Okay. Yes. yes. He punched people. At what? times, when that's at what times, the Lord when that's to how, him to do. Exactly. When that's mm-hmm. how the Lord he was leading him or He wasn't throwing haymakers. He wasn't doing that. <laughs> it, it was, he wasn't giving him an uppercut. It wasn't that. Okay. So, I, we all have a responsibility to do what the Lord, through his Holy Spirit, is leading us to say and to do. And when he said to do that's that. That's it. He didn't just jump around punching people, right? It's only as the Holy Spirit ministers. Our job is obedience. That's it. And what he's Be telling obedient. you, Layla, and Promise, and Charles and myself, and your mother, to do when he says to do it, right? In Numbers 12, uh, here's a great example, right? And it brings us to, to a, something we were discussing well, in a previous episode this week, right? Even in communication, the Lord is going to communicate with you however He chooses to communicate with you. It could be one way, it could be different every time. We have a responsibility to be willing, right? And to be ready to hear the Lord in whatever way He chooses to communicate with us. All right, so in Numbers 12, it begins with Miriam and Aaron. As we're reading here, right, um, in Exodus, Aaron is the one that the Lord is saying, hey, you're going to consecrate him as the high priest, right? Yes. So clearly this is after that. Moses, or sorry, Aaron is operating as high priest, but, and Miriam is Moses' sister who raised him or looked after him Mm-hmm. while Moses was growing up in Pharaoh's house. Mm-hmm. So the Lord had already given her a place, a position, and she was being used, right? And yes. now, here we are with the, the whole nation of Israel, as the children of Israel in the wilderness, and she still has a place. She's still being used of the Lord. But here's the difference, right? And it, it begins in verse 4. Um. So a little bit of background. Miriam and Aaron are talking. And they are talking against Moses. Right? Essentially, because of their own lust, their own desire, they wanted his plot, his position, his place. And then the Lord appears in verse 4. and says, Suddenly the Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, Come out, you three. And the Lord came down in the pillar of, oh, sorry, come out you three to the tabernacle of meeting. So the three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both went forward. And then he, that is the Lord, said, hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. And he gives the why. He is faithful in all my house. I speak with him face to face, even plainly, and not in dark sayings. And he sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? So does everybody understand that? The Lord had already given each of them a prominent role and place in doing the work of the Lord and ministering to the Lord, and they were still not satisfied. Still not satisfied. They didn't guard over their own heart. They didn't remain humble. All right, that was the verse 3. It says how Moses was very humble more than all the men who were on the face of the earth. Here he is in charge as a leader of the whole nation of Israel, but he remained humble. Okay? 
He allowed the Lord to speak to him however the Lord chose to speak to him. But his relationship with the Lord is as a friend, not demanding things, not trying to snatch for himself, right? Yes. And he helped, or he, uh, not helped, but he allowed the Lord to help him walk out the calling and the plan that the Lord had for Moses' life. There is the relationship, I'll say difference, because it's not just about, oh, we hear from the Lord too, we can, we can do what you do. Moses, which is essentially what they were getting at, right? And if you read the the previous verses, especially verse 2, right? They yes. said, has the Lord indeed spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? But the Lord heard that. It's not just about, oh, you hear from the Lord. Great. Do you hear accurately? Do you speak just what the Lord said? Do you do just what the Lord does? Or do you add your own spin or twist to what he said hmm. there's a difference and y- y- also ahead, i would say this they forgot that they were not the giver of the gifts that they had That's which it. is what we were talking to you about they forgot that they were using the lord's gifts and the lord was and not them using it but god was using them to minister to the people and they thought for some some reason this is my power i've got this for myself aren't i special look at me and listen, sin nature, that is inherent in just about everyone. Mm-hmm. Whether you're going, I'm so shy, nobody can look at me. Or you're going, hey, everybody look at me. Right? All of it is vanity and all of it is fleshly boasting. So they forgot. And even in the moment as I was looking at this, didn't this sound like you guys getting called downstairs because you're arguing? It sure sounded like me and my sisters. You three get out here. <laughs> We're going to address here. this right now. Yeah. But... What, I'm, what I want to point out about that is in their minds, they weren't doing anything wrong. In their minds, their siblings having an argument. But to God, it was something different, deeper, more significant. Siblings, can you hear me? Yes. Mm-hmm. All right, but the same thing, right? Look at, look at Joseph. All right, look, same thing. And it's look th- at David. He didn't go, well, I'm anointed to be king. Speaking to Saul as a child, as a child or as an adolescent, I'm anointed to be king. Why are you in my spot? No, 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 no. You're in my seat. He allowed the Lord to work those things out. Yes? Yes. Okay. Right? So let's allow the Lord to have his way, not our way. Let's allow him to do his perfect work. Mm -hmm. And it begins with us, in and through us first. And he'll bring those things to pass. Amen. And understanding, like we said, there are many dwellings. There's the whole body. Paul addresses this. Everybody can't be a hand or, you know, an eye or whatever it is that we think is important or powerful. God gave you a place and that place is absolutely needed. Whatever he's tasked you with is necessary for the body of Christ. Amen. Right? Moses wasn't more special because his name was Moses. Because you see, he felt a little bit entitled and forgot the holiness and the sovereignty of God and struck the rock the second time when God told him to speak to it. And that cost him not his eternal salvation, but his opportunity to see in the natural the fulfillment of the thing that he desired, Mm -hmm. which was the promised land to actually go in and eat of the fruit and drink the milk and honey and enjoy that. He got to look at it from a distance. And the Lord said, come on home, my friend. I'll see you in just a minute. Mm hmm. So there's, there's no place that we ever get to that we can feel, I'm entitled, I'm special. I don't have to obey the things of God. The rules are different for me all of a sudden. Right. Exactly. So God gave Moses a role because that's what he determined Moses would do, not because Moses was so special. The, do you see the difference? There's a human perspective and there's a God perspective. The human perspective wants to think they're more important than they are. But you'll find this with all of the prophets, right? All of the prophets were used the way they were used because that's how the Lord chose to use them and because they were willing to humble themselves and submit every aspect of their lives to the Lord, to give Him say in what they did, how they did it, what they said, how they said it, 
when every aspect, regardless of what the situation or circumstance was. Amen. And the Lord using you one time, does it now entitle you to forever? Balaam. Samson. He was a prophet of the Lord. He wasn't a part of Israel, but he was a prophet of the Lord. And he was used by God until he wasn't because he determined he was going to disobey God and try to uh, war game around obeying God's statutes. But, and let's also look right? at this. It's human nature, not divine nature. It's human nature to want to be the person in the spotlight. And it's just power, but that Which, comes from the okay, adversary. Yep. I'm going to take over God's place. I'm going to ascend. I'm going to do yet. Yeah, you know. How did Jesus live? Not seeking his own glory, but the Father's glory. That the Father would be glorified. He came humble and, and he served. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, as you brought up, honey, you have what, what Paul describes in the body, right? But there's a key verse or line in there. It says, an even greater honor are given to those parts of the body which are not visible. Mm-hmm. Amen to that. It's not just the visible ones. Someone may have some a pretty face or eyes or something, right? They seem like they get to talk to everyone and everybody okay. respects them or whatever Great. it is. But uh, right? How how well is mm-hmm. is that gonna? How long is that gonna last? How how well are they gonna be able to perform if the heart decides to stop beating? Oh, okay, but you can't see the heart. But clearly there is a, a great honor there, right? It's needed. And so on and so forth, right? All these things that are not visible, that are, are if you will, hidden. It's, mm-hmm. People know it's there, but they don't get to see it. But they still serve, those parts of the body still serve vital functions that allow the rest of the body to mm-hmm. operate. Amen. And so sometimes our perspective gets off and we think, I'm serving you other human being versus I'm serving God. That's My it. role is based on what God's will is. Remember we talked about the will of God. What is, what is God actually doing? What's the overarching plan that God is working on? Because when you know that you're here to fulfill his purpose, his purpose, it takes you off of your mind and it takes other people off your mind. And you stop seeing it as um, like Miriam, I changed your diaper. I gave you milk. How dare you talk to me? Like this, how dare you think you're important, et cetera, et cetera. And it removes it from being human to human, knowing people after the flesh, to moving you to knowing them after the spirit. My God is working on something. The heart is not supplying your voice. It's supporting the, the will of God. Does that make sense? And, and then right. there's the other, other side of that, right? When we fully, I'll say, commit to recognizing and knowing who we are serving, that we are indeed, in fact, serving and ministering to the Lord, not other people. Now I can also show you more love and grace when, well, they curse you instead of bless you, Mm -hmm. when they speak against you and spitefully use you and all those other things. Because my work, my ministry, is not done to you, Sir it's done, or ma'am. <laughs> I'm serving the Lord. Amen. And he's the, the one ministering to you yeah, through me. Mm-hmm. And you're getting the benefits. That's how I like That's to it. look at it. But it's being done unto the Lord. Amen to that. So when I forgive, and we should forgive, right? But I can, uh, what I mean is, well, let's go back to what I said before. I can extend more grace because of the grace the Lord showed me. I'm serving the Lord. I'm doing it unto the Lord regardless of what you say or how you treat me or any of those things. Amen. So what makes it easier when we can recognize that and remember it and just walk in that? Amen. Jesus got on the cross because his, he could endure that because his work was unto the Father, not focused on the people who were abusing him. Go ahead, brother. <clears throat> you know, um, when Layla was speaking, I was thinking... <clears throat> Back in the 80s, when I was in college, we were learning how to determine how much heating and air conditioning we needed to put into a house. Mm-hmm. It's called a load calculation. And it's a very long calculation, of course, um, that's, that's all in perspective. Somebody who 
like trigonometry <laughs> or something like that would think that the equations were quite simple. But to me, they, they were bothersome. You had to manually look up your multipliers in a really thick book depending on what type of window, what kind of wall, whether it was brick, whether it was wood, whether it was all these <clears throat> these things. And the, um, my, my instructor said you need to understand this so that if there's a problem, you have full knowledge of what's going on. Mm -hmm. Because when you enter stuff into a computer program, if you don't understand everything you entered, if there's a problem, you won't be able to identify it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think about um, David when he sinned with um, Bathsheba and um, he's being told, you know, if you had wanted more, if you just asked me. That's it. If you just asked me, I would have given it to you. I, I think there's a component for me as we're studying all the things about the temple, but more specifically here, we're down to the individual, to the That's individual it. high priest mm -hmm. and all the things that were required. I mean, almost to the point where if you didn't tie your belt on right, <clears throat> you may not come out of this alive. Right. I mean, as you know, mm -hmm. okay. you're mm -hmm. making this came out. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, so um, I don't, think it's uh, I, I think it's important to consider how well we have it and how much Amen. Jesus did for us all Amen. these symbols continue to point to him Amen. and he has made access to God Almighty as easy as possible and has removed every barrier possible to be removed Amen. Mm -hmm. um and when we look back to see how difficult it was to have access to the Lord God Almighty, um, it's just, it's, I think it just really bears considering and really thinking about that. And, and, and he doesn't really, you know, what he says, yeah, my, my burden is light. That's right. What That's he's it. asking right. of us, it really is not Amen. that difficult. And when we change our mindset from, I have to do these things to, a mindset of I get to do these things Amen. Amen. and I have full access to God because Amen. of Christ. Um, it's just amazing. Amen. It's just amazing. I, I, you know, you, you and I, we've spoken about this. I'm like, I, you know, that mindset of I get to do these things. Amen. The Lord doesn't need me to do anything. To be who he is. For right. Sure. It's, he's going to bring <laughs> it to pass regardless. Mm -hmm. But, and, and I, and I say that because I would have disqualified myself from his service long ago. But the Lord in his infinite wisdom is like, hey, no, 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 I, I want you to do this. Will you do this? Right, and Which is a blessing and it's a miracle in and of itself that even after being in such opposition to the Lord, he still says, no, 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 come on. Let's do this together. Serve me. And That's a, a blessing and a miracle. Yes, and he doesn't treat you like a dirty dog or a <laughs> nope, scoundrel. not or, at all. Um, a less than. He doesn't, and hey, I have to say that. He doesn't treat us like what we were acting like or what we were doing. He treats us like royalty. Amen. He treats us like his dear son. Like a king and a priest. Amen. Before him. Amen. We're welcomed As his into the son, Holy of Holies. Well, for me, his son, for you, his daughter. Right, but that's for any of us. Amen. Those that are willing. That's how he treats us. That's how he views us. He always has open arms. Amen. Which is beautiful. And like you said, Dean, all the obstacles, aside from our personal choice, it's an easy road. Mm -hmm. It's an easy road to the Father. All you have to do is come through the door. Come the right way and choose. And, and he also builds Amen. up, or gives us, not builds up, but he gives us these reminders to remind us of him, to remind us of his goodness and his greatness and his compassion and love and mercy and all these different, I'll just say his nature, his character and attributes and, and the things he's already done. They're there for us to know, for us to be reminded. He, right, he, brings these, he will bring all these things to our remembrance if we're willing, if we choose to be led by him, by his Holy Spirit, right? Those that are led by the Spirit, these are the sons of God. Amen. Amen. So I just want to encourage you, come into a relationship with the Lord and be led by Him. It will absolutely change your life now 
and for eternity. Amen to that. So let's pause there for today. This is a lot. And um, before we close, I just I just want to ask if if you've been blessed by this this podcast, this episode, that you like it, they subscribe on this any number one any number of the platforms where you find a day of prayer on, and that you share it with someone else so they too can be blessed, and that you will be blessed by sharing in in the labor and the blessing as a result of you know this ministry, and um, and we want to thank you in advance for blessing us. And uh, just seeing, well, the Lord's word go forth Amen. throughout the entirety of the earth. So, with that, can I get a volunteer to close out in prayer, please? I will. All right, Layla. Lord, we just thank you for today. And Lord, we thank you for your blessings and your grace, Lord, that you reward us by allowing us to partake in your master plan, Lord, to redeem the earth lord and those that are for you lord that you cleanse them lord and that we can be joined to you again as we were before the world was lord and we just thank you for your goodness lord and that you watch over us lord that you care for us that you protect us lord that you provide for us god that we have no reason to worry about anything lord because your eyes go to and fro throughout the whole earth lord and we just thank you for all that you've done for us, Lord, all that you're doing, Lord, and we thank you for our listeners and our partners, Lord, the blessings that you're pouring out on them, Lord, and we thank you for those that participate in this devotional as well, Lord, that you're ministering to them, Lord, and through them. So we just thank you for your infinite wisdom, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. We love you. God bless you, and have a wonderful day. We hope you've enjoyed listening to A Day of Prayer's Morning Bible Study. This year, Pastor John and I are believing for 1,000 new partners to believe God with us and join in the work of the ministry. God is doing great things through a day of prayer, and we want you to be a part. If the Lord has placed on your heart to partner with us, please contact us online at adayofprayer.org. Click on the menu and select Partner. Complete the form, and we'd love to hear from you. Thank you again. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to A Day of Prayer. We trust the Lord that you are strengthened and encouraged in your relationship with Christ. Visit us on our website, adayofprayer.org, where you can check out our blog, find additional study resources, or shop the official A Day of Prayer store. Remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So until next time, Take care and God bless you.